everyone welcome back and today in this session we are going to talk about database normalization and its data anomalies yes we have studied it before but in this uh, video basically i've come up with a different approach of studying data anomalies and let's see how you find it and basically this video uh, helps you to have a quick revision of this concept uh, in the most simplest manner that is uh, been my objective so far in developing this style of video and so uh, let's start with it and I'll be very excited to know about your comments and reactions after this video so let's go for it So birth of management database management system. First of all, I'll just give a, a brief overview of how database management system, you know, it came into the picture. So in the very beginning or in the past, let's compare the past and the present scenario. In the very beginning, we used to work with file management system or we can say record management system where we used to manage different sort of information or records in the form of files. We used to use a pen and paper, jot down the things and we used to store them in the form of files. But what happened in the process was that it generally, you know, uh, came up as a big, huge pile of files on our table and uh, actually we ended up getting very stressed to manage that information to find for a particular record when we had to find it took a lot of our time right so storing data fetching data and maintaining data like whatever information i store in one file should also uh, be true with respect to the other files right it is not that i am saying a student roll number for a student let's say sham is 201 and in another file I write it as 202 then eventually there is no truth in the information because eventually when I'm going to check for the roll number it either it's going to let uh, let into a confusion or it is going to result into a chaos and so on right so we tend to lose uh, consistency in that manner so therefore the storing fetching and maintaining data become a huge problem then uh so then we thought about that would keeping different files you know would it help that if i keep information about different students in different files right so the answer was not much it won't help much as the data increases because we don't uh, only need to store about the student information but we also need to uh, store many other different types of information such as you can say about the if i talk about a university system then about the teachers or the faculty that are employed there different kinds of courses and so on right you get the basic idea then in the present scenario the solution which came to all these problems was database management system so database is basically database management system provides us an easy way to store fetch and maintain data and that too in a quick manner right but then an important question over here is that how do i store my data in a database management system so essentially relational tables uh, which I would say are uh, uh, again successors of files or you can say uh, a synonym or you can say a very analogy to the files uh, relational tables as we used to store the information in files now we are storing the records or the data information in the form of relational tables right now this is an example of a relational table and what you see in the arrow is categories or attributes different attributes uh, or how i categorize my information that is why it is known as categories right how i categorize my information for example a student's information can be categorized by his name the different courses he or, he or she is taking and the different course ids is what is displayed in this table also the student ids which is very important okay now 
the records, the rows that you see over here are known as the records or the tuples in the database, right? Or in the relational table, you can say. And what is this is the schema, which almost remains same for like whenever you're adding a new record, you're not always changing the schema, right? The schema is something which remains unchanged for a very long period of time until in, in uh, unless you have some huge changes to be made right uh, and the schema basically shows you the structure of information and that is why it is called schema and let's move on now then how do i the question is again remains that how do i organize my data using relational tables should i keep all the data in one table so the answer is no then if i don't keep it how many tables should be there right then also if i have to keep them in separate tables how do i divide the data in different tables right so these were the many questions that came to our mind and the solution was normalization which is an effective method of organizing data using relational tables it provides an effective method of organizing your data using relational tables okay so basically it is a particular method now, what if I do not consider normalization while storing my data? What if I just, you know, dump the entire data into a single table? Well, then you have to face different data anomalies due to data redundancy because a huge problem which arises due to the lack of normalization is data redundancy. And what are the major types of the problems or the data anomalies that arise are insertion anomalies, deletion data anomaly and updation data anomaly. Okay. Now, uh, I just said a term that data redundancy, face data anomalies due to data redundancy. Now, what is data redundancy? Where do I see the redundancy in, let's say, this example which we have seen? So, just check this information. This Java PL02 has been so, uh, stored twice in this table. Similarly, C++ PL01, this information also has been stored twice in this table again if you check the student names rahul's name has been repeated twice similarly for sonia so this is what we call redundancy or the repetition of the data which you store in a relational table our goal or objective always is to reduce this redundancy because it emerges as the root cause of all the data problems this we are going to see very soon in the slides coming up okay now let's come to data anomalies we have this particular table as an example because we'll be studying the anomalies with the help of example and now let's try insert a new student record somya who has not enrolled for any course yet okay so we have this table now we are going to try to insert this record but now the question is no course information right how do i insert such a record i have this table its schema has been specified now you are seeing me to insert a student's record who has not enrolled in for any course right so who is not uh, currently taking any course so i don't have any course information corresponding to her so how do i write what should i write in the table so this is what is insertion anomaly the inability to add data to the database due to the absence of some other data because in this case if you take the example we had the student name we have the student id right but we do not have the course and course id information corresponding to it therefore we are unable to insert such a record in our database so this is insertion anomaly okay let's take another example now rahul has left our school so let's delete his record from the database so so you consider it done see the change table right over here now we have deleted rahul's record but then wait what was the course id for c sharp course right uh, if I just need to check the course ID for C sharp course, I cannot make out the course ID of C sharp course from the current updated version of the table. So uh, now what has happened is that 
Now you would say that I had it somewhere, but I can't find it, right? Did I make any mistake? Did I delete something with Rahul's record? Did I delete some extra information? So yes, because this C sharp course was a course which only Rahul was taking over here. So that is why what happened was while deleting Rahul's uh, record from here we also unintentionally deleted the c sharp course information right so this is deletion anomaly the unintended loss of data due to the deletion of some other data okay i'll also talk about how to avoid these problems what is the solution but now for now just first of all let's take an overview of all the problems and I, we are just left with one other anomaly which is updation anomaly yes so again i have this table for example now i have added some more records to it and for this example let's just change the course id of c++ course to c01 instead of pl01 so let's update the database so we have changed it over here right but what have what is the mistake that we have done so if we just check the course id for c sharp course uh, sorry so it should be c++ over here so if we check the course id for c++ course over here it is c01 in the first row but pl01 in the fourth row over here and sim similarly pl01 in the last three rows over here right so this is what the issue over here so basically what i did was i just changed its value in one of the records and therefore what i did was i just forgot to update it for all the c records and this is what is update or updation anomaly due to redundancy in data because that information was repeating for a number of rows in the table as you can see what i did was i forgot or i by mistake updated only some of the records instead of all and this leads to database inconsistency or loss of database integrity now what are these two terms what is database inconsistency and what is database integrity so inconsistency is for example now course id for c course differs in the table at some places it is c01 and the other it is pl01 so i am now not having this information consistent or same at all the places so this is what is inconsistency and then what is integrity integrity in reference to database is maintenance and assurance of data accuracy and consistency okay so maintenance and assurance of data accuracy and consistency that i am saying that my data is accurate i am assuring you with this information that my database is accurate if you can give that assurance then you can say that your database is integrate but over here you don't have database integrity in your table right because you cannot uh, say with confidence what is the course id for c++ because the information is different at different places you cannot say the data is accurate right because it is saying different things for different records so those were the different anomalies and now the question arises how do we avoid anomalies so is normalization the only solution let's try some others before we actually opt for normalization so the first problem that we encountered was then when we were trying to insert a record of student somia who had not enrolled for any other course right so avoiding insertion or deletion sorry deletion anomaly what we can do is we can insert or delete using null for missing data for example over here what i could have done was insert somya's record like this that i just inserted null in place of course and course id for somya since she has not opted for any course right now similarly if we delete rahul's record from the database without deleting course and course id what would happen is 
something like this i've just inserted null in its place without deleting the entire row but what problem over here arises is now this null is pointing to a student name having a student id right we cannot because we cannot insert null in case of student id since it is one of the keys right so we cannot set student id to null because this is something which is helping us to identify the entire set of students right so what do we do we keep student id equals to 3 but then it leads to again loss of database integrity because this and so in this information is something not which is true because there is no student but yet it is having a student id so this leads to loss of database integrity then what is the uh, solution for it the solution is normalization we have to go for normalization how do we do that we store student information and course information as different tables let's try the normalization then so uh yeah uh before that let's check for update anomaly as well can we check can we try to normalize uh, can we try to have some hatch over here as well is there some trick in which we can you know avoid normalization so the alternative over here is either normalize or update carefully so no such solution no as such no short trick or shortcut over here so great then let's just try normalization and store student and course information in different tables so here is the student information and here is the course information but then how do we connect them because we also need some way to store the information about which students are taking which courses then we can have another table as enroll list where we say this student id student id of the particular where we st store basically the student ids and the corresponding course ids basically it means that stu a student with student id 1 is taking the course with course id pl01 right similarly student with student id 3 is taking courses with course ids pl02 and pl03 so basically we have very much less redundancy over here and therefore one of the essential outcomes is that normalization reduces redundancy so then normalization again provides an effective method to organize data using relational tables and the objective every time is basic objective is to reduce redundancy we have essential different forms in normalization they act as different you know levels of a particular game if i may say and every level or every normal form has certain rules if you fulfill the rules to achieve that normal form you win the level basically you achieve that normal form also rules followed at a level should also be obeyed at higher levels for instance rules for one normal form 1nf should be satisfied at 2nf 3nf and so on right so this was a broad idea of normalization data anomalies and this was the reference reference book which i followed to create this content you may please study it in detail from this book and i hope i did present uh, a in an interesting method and an interesting video i uh, thought of sharing a different kind of video this time which basically helps you to learn the content in an interesting manner if you liked it please press the like button below you can support our channel by uh, liking the videos subscribing to the channel sharing the videos with your friends and colleagues and also stay notified with the latest uh, updates by pressing the bell icon of the video which is very near to the subscribe icon okay so hope to see you all uh, in the next session till then stay tuned happy learning and thank you